hello everyone welcome to the next lecture on the random process today we will discuss about what is the stationary process or the strict sense stationary process myself dr gar working in the school of mathematics thapar institute what we have discussed so far is in the last two lecture we have discussed what is the stochastic random process what is the mean auto correlation and the covariance which are available at here now in this lecture we will see about what is the stationary process so as we have discussed in this uh, lecture is stochastic random process we have seen we can classify the random process based on the different criteria one of them is question uh, one of the important question that can be arises about the random process is what is meant by the stationary process under what condition you can set the random process that is x of t while t belongs to the any of the index set is a stationary or not so what is the definition is that any of the process is said to be the stationary if its statistical property does not changes with respect to the time what is the meaning of the statistical property that is with respect to the pdf or you can say with respect to the cdf so you can say if for any of the stationary pro process x of t and the time factor t plus of delta where delta is any of the uh, real number are there which have the same probability distribution like of here probability distribution of the x of t probability distribution of this are same this is in terms of the cdf or if you want to say in terms of the pdf then we can say the probabilities density function at the x and the probability density function at the time t plus delta t is same are there so remember that you can conclude that any of the random process is stationary if the time factor does not changes its statistical property what is the strict sense stationary process is there so any of the random process is said to be strict sense if now you can see here there is only one variable x so this is called as the first order stationary process if you consider here as the two that is called as the x1 x2 then we will call as the second order stationary process or in general if you consider here as the rth then it is called as the rth order stationary process the definition again same if you consider as the rth factor then the time is again the same this is in terms of the cdf while this is in term of the pdf rth so any of the process which is not stationary is called as the evolutionary process for example here so if a uh, random process discrete random process is given to you such that each of the xn are iid such that the cdf is given to be here then your target is to check whether this is this random process is a strict sense stationary process or not so how you can prove that your target is to prove whether this and this both are same or not so how you can prove that since what is given to you they are independent also so once they are independent what is the meaning of that so we all knows that what is the property of that if this is the independent it means this is nothing but fx into fy the same for here so since they are the iid that's independent so you can write this as of the multiplication form same for here now what is the value of this so if you look about that this is the n and it is independent of n so this is nothing but my f of x1 this is f of x2 and up to this is f of x r similarly what is that this is again independent of the n so again this is my f of x1 f of x2 and so on so you can see rhs on the both sides are equal it means this and this are equal so what is the meaning of that this factor is independent of the time here hence this is my strict sense stationary process so remember that whenever you want to show that it's a strict sense stationary process either you can start with the cdf but it is not an easy task to compute the cdf for each of the random process so for that you want to compute the expected value of the x expected value of the x square x cube x4 and so on and prove that all are my constant if all are my constant then it is a strict sense if at least if at least one of them if at least one of them not constant then we will call as the not strict sense stationary so for example here so firstly you have to prove that the mean and variance of the first order what is the meaning of the first order is that is consist of only one variable x are my constant what is given to you that is the first order stationary process by the definition of the stationary 
uh, that time is remain the, the invariant are there now what do you want to prove that your target is to prove whether the mean is constant or not that is a time with respect to the mean with respect to the variance are same so i can start with the left hand side of this so if it is a continuous variable then you can take as a integration if it is a discrete then you can take as a summation now what is the value of this so by using this equation number 1 i can take this value as here what is that this is nothing but the random expected value of the random process this so the first part is proved similarly and this uh, what do you mean what is the meaning of that this is a constant so hence there now how you can do the definition of the variance we all knows that definition of the variance is my here what is the mu of x this is nothing but the expected value of the which is a constant now again you can integrate them from minus infinity to here this is my x of this now what is the value of here you all knows that this value is again by using equation number 1 which is come to be here and what is that this is equation number of here again this is the variance is constant look at the here so you have your target is to prove that x is not a strict sense so what is the purpose of that it means your target is to prove any one of them is not a constant any one of them at least any one of them so what you can do we can start with the e of x t that is x of t is my here so i can start with this what is the e of x square is my here now if you open this bracket you can see that t is my constant value always so you can take it outside and here now your purpose is to find the value of this 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 and here is this values are given to you no but this a b and given are to you in this form a has the value minus of 2 a has the value 1 with respect to probability similarly b r from here can you find the expected value of a all of you know that how you find the expected value of the x that is x into probability of the x so same for here so can you find this as minus of 2 into 1 by 3 plus 1 into 2 by 3 which is a 0 similarly can you find the expected value of the b so since b also have the same value so this is again be a here so therefore expected value of the a expected value of the b both are my 0 similarly you can find the expected value of the a square what is the a square that is a 4 of 3 1 of 2 that is my 2 a and b are given to you independent so what is the meaning of the e of ab this is nothing but ea multiply eb which is to be a 0 so i can substitute this value at here you will get both the values as 0 so since 0 is a constant for all the values of the t this is also the constant for all the value of t it means these are my stationary but since we have to prove it's not stationary so we have to check for the x cube also so what is the x cube you can now apply the a plus b whole cube which is come to be here now you can open this bracket which is right here your target is to find the value of the e cube so what is the value of the e cube so you can see minus of 2 that is minus of 8 of this 1 of 2 by 3 so what is that this is minus of 2 minus 8 by 3 and this similarly what is the e of b cube is again it is my minus of 2 how you find the values of this how you find the value of the e a square b so we all knows that a and b are independent so a square and b are also independent so once it is independent so i can write this as a square of eb what is the e of a square is 2 e of b is my 0 so this value is my 0 same for here so we can compute them as of this zero so i can substitute all the values here you will get as a minus 2 this is minus 2 and so on so you can see this is not be a constant so therefore this is not a strict sense look at the other one is that whether the process is stationary or not so what is the meaning of the stationary is that is you have to check whether the expected value is a constant or not so we can substitute the value of the x what is the x is my here so this is my given to be this how you can do that expected value this is with respect to the phi so this is a phi what is the pdf of the here this is given to you 1 by pi over the domain minus phi so 1 by pi is my outside and here what is the integration of the cos this is nothing but my sin of t plus phi from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 so once you will substitute this value so what is that this is 1 upon pi 
वट इज दैट दिस इज साइन ऑफ टी प्लस पाई बाय टू माइनस साइन ऑफ टी माइनस पाई बाय टू सो साइन पाई बाय टू प्लस टी इज माई माइनस ऑफ कॉस टी कॉस ऑफ टी प्लस कॉस ऑफ टी दैट इज नथिंग बट माई हियर नाउ यू कैन सी दिस इज नॉट अ कॉन्स्टेंट बिकॉज फॉर द डिफरेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द टी दिस वैल्यू इज अ डिफरेंट सो विच इज नॉट अ कॉन्स्टेंट हैंस इज नॉट अ स्टेशन check whether this is a stationary or not so we all knows that this is a poisson process and what is the mean of the poisson distribution this is nothing but my parameter here so can you say this is a constant no because this is dependent upon the time so for the different value of the t this value as a different hence this is not a constant so therefore this is not a stationary again you have to check whether it's a stationary or not process is given to you omega not is a constant amplitude y is a random variable with a uniform distribution is there so again your target is to check whether this is there what is given to you this is the uniform distribution what is the pdf of the uniform distribution is 1 upon b minus a so this is my a this is my b so the pdf is my 1 upon 1 what is the mean is my a plus b upon 2 that is a half various is my here now we can start with the left hand side we can substitute the value here what is that this y is a random variable and here so since omega 0 omega 0 is my constant t is a for a particular constant so this can be taken outside what is that e of y e of y is my half can you say this is a constant value no because for the different value of the small t this has a different value so it means this is not a constant so it is not a stationary another definition is how you can define the independent random process and the stationary independent increment we all knows that uh, if you have the two variables x and y when you said that it's a independent random variable when its joint density function is nothing but the product of the marginal function the same we can define here a random process x of t is said to be the independent if for the each of the ti is this probability density function is nothing but the product based on this independent random variable when you can say that it's a stationary independent increment any of the random process x of t is said to be the independent increment what is the meaning of the increment is if you take the time as 0 t1 t2 and so on in this order such that x of t0 x of t1 minus x of t0 x2 minus x1 and so on are my independent random variable what is the meaning of the independent random variable means this property is satisfied when it's said to be the stationary now as the definition of stationary is it is independent of the time factor it means whatever the two periods are there t2 and t1 that is like of this the length of this that is a t2 minus t1 is same as that of t1 minus 0 that is if this has the same distribution of here you can see what is the length of this again t2 minus t1 so in other word you can say t1 minus 0 is same as that of t2 minus t1 similarly t3 minus t2 is the same as that of this then you can say it's a stationary and so on then the process is said to be the stationary independent increment for example uh, if you have the random process which is the stationary as well as the independent increment such that initial value is my 0 and the variance is here then the following relations holds the proof are very simple we can see the first proof are there so what we can do is we can define the function as say phi of t then we all knows that x of 0 is my 0 so can i write this value as of this minus x of 0 you can see this value i can write like of this this is nothing but my phi of t what is the difference of this t minus 0 that is my tr because phi of 0 is my 0 now i can add i can subtract some another variables or we can define as a t plus of this like of here we can add and subtract say t2 why because what is the length of this is my t2 what is the length of this is my t1 so this is the t1 plus of t2 this are given to be independent so we all knows that what is the variance of the x plus y when x and y are independent it means variance of x plus variance of y so this is my one variable this is my second variable i can write like here 
what is the value of this this value as the same as that of this so which is what is that this is nothing but my phi of t why because here is the t that is a difference between this and this what is the difference between here is t1 what is the difference between here is t2 now based on this we all know that the solution of this what is the solution of this this is the only solution is my k of t where k is constant how you can find that we can see what is the phi of 1 that is a k also what is the phi of 1 this is a variance of x1 what is the variance of the x1 this is nothing but my sigma 1 scale so therefore what is your target your target is to find the value of phi t so therefore phi of t is k k is my sigma 1 square of t is the required proof of the first part Similarly, we can start with the second part. The same way we can do that. Let t2 is a greater than of t1, and by the definition of this, we can start from here. I can write this variance of x2 as I can subtract minus and plus r here. Again, this value and this value are independent, so I can write this value here. What is that? I can find this value. This value I can take an as of this. What is that? According to the first part, this value is my nothing but my by using the first part this is sigma 1 square of t2 why because variance of that t is my sigma 1 square of the t so if this is my t2 then here is my t2 r you can take sigma 1 common and this is a required proof similarly you can start the third part so we all know that how you how you can define the covariance so this is my here we can start with the variance of this variance of the ax plus b y is my here I can find the values of this from here so this minus of 2 can be taken like of this I can take this value as from the part A this value is from the part A this is a subtraction value which I can take from the part B now so since this value I can take if t2 is my greater than of t1 so I can take the two cases are there I can substitute this value so depending upon that whether t2 is my greater than t1 then its value is here if t1 is my greater than of this then instead of this we can write here as a t1 minus t2 now if you open this bracket you can see this will be cancelled out it will be twice this 2 will also be cancelled in this case t1 will be cancelled out so you can see this value are here i can combine these two values and which can be written like of here is the required proof of this one now the major advantages of this stationary distribution is if we know if we prove that the process is stationary then whatever we have observed from the past that will normally give you the information about the future because expected values are my constant always so irrespective of the time so whatever the past behavior is also the future but there are many real life problems which are not the strict sense as we discussed in the one example also so or in some time if it is a strict sense then it is very difficult to prove that because you have to prove this is a constant this is a constant this is a constant this is a constant and so on b so it is very difficult to prove that so in order to handle this we will define the weaker form of the stationary called as the wide sense stationary or the weak sense stationary that is a wss that we will will cover in our next class till then you can simply follow this lecture you can like and subscribe and share with this video with your friends. Best of luck students. Happy learning.